Hello and welcome to this series on getting started with JavaScript. In this video we'll be covering the basics of the language, including its syntax, variables and basic data types. I'll show you how to set up a development environment and run your very first JavaScript program. But first, why should you learn JavaScript? JavaScript is used for a variety of purposes. A few of the many things you can do with JavaScript are to add interactivity to web pages, build server-side applications, create desktop applications, and create mobile applications. JavaScript ranks as one of the most popular programming languages and has been used to build lots of the web pages and software you use day to day. In technical terms, JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, which means you don't need to specify a data type when declaring a variable like you would in many other languages such as C, C++ and Java. Now you might be thinking, what do I mean by data type and declaration? And if that's the case, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. First, let's talk about how to set up a development environment to run JavaScript. We can run JavaScript code without Node.js inside a browser like Chrome. But before we do that, we want to be able to run it from the terminal. In order to do this, we need to install something called Node.js. So first you'll need to install it if it's not already on your machine. And you can do this by going to Node.js.org and you want to click on the LTS version. When you click on this, it will download and you can click on the installer and follow the installer steps. Once you've done that, you also need to install something called Visual Studio Code. This is the text editor that we're going to be using to write our JavaScript code. So click on the download button here and then run the installer steps and once you've done that, you should see something looking a bit like this. When you're here, you're going to need to open a folder. So go to the top, click File, Open, and then you can create a new folder and open it here. Once you've done that, you can click on the Explorer, and you should see nothing in here. Now what we can do is create our first JavaScript file inside here. So I'm going to right click and click New File, and then in here, I'm going to type video1.js. You can call it whatever you want, but make sure you've got .js on the end. So now we're going to write our very first JavaScript program. So what you need to do is type console.log, and then you need parentheses, and inside of those, you need quotes, and you're going to say hello, comma world, or whatever you want it to say and put a semicolon on the end and then save that and now what you need to do is go to the top click terminal new terminal and here we're going to be able to execute our JavaScript program so I'm just going to type in node video one dot JS and once you've typed a few characters it should be able to auto complete so you can try pressing tab and see if it completes it for you. Then if we click enter, we're going to see we have hello world. So now you've written your very first JavaScript program. Now what we can do is go to the explorer and close it because we won't need it anymore and we want to focus solely on the code that we're writing. Now let's talk about variables. A variable is a named storage location that contains data. To declare a variable in JavaScript, you use the let or the const keyword followed by the name of the variable. For example, we can say let x and end with a semicolon, save that, and then under here, if we type console.log x and execute this code, we're going to see that we get undefined. So why is this? Well, it's because we haven't assigned a value to the variable yet. So let's assign a value to it, and this is called initialization because we're setting the initial value. So I'm going to say let x equals 5. Save that, and then we'll be able to see we get an output of 5. So now what we can do is we can also change the value. After the declaration and initialization, we can say x equals 10. And if we run this, now we're going to see x is actually 10. Now this is using the let keyword. 
But remember earlier I talked about the const keyword as well. And const stands for constant. So that means we're going to have a variable that can never change. So now if we try and run this, we're going to see that we get an error. The error says type error, assignment to constant variable. And this is because when we have constants, we can't reassign the value. So now if I remove the assignment here and run it again, we're going to get no errors and we're just going to get the number 5. So you might be thinking, why should we use const at all? Couldn't we just use let? And that's true, you could just use let. But it's much better practiced to use const on variables that you know you're not going to change later down the line. Now let's talk about data types. There are several basic data types in JavaScript, including numbers, strings, and booleans. Here, for example, we've got a number, the number 5. And specifically, this is an integer because it's a whole number. The other type of number that we have is called a floating point number, or a float for short. And we can use this simply by saying something like 1.5. And this is a float because it has a decimal place. A string is another data type, and we can use it simply by using double quotes or single quotes. It doesn't matter which we use. But then we can say something like, hello world, like we did before. And this, if we run it, is exactly what we had before for our first initial program. The only difference here is we're assigning the hello world text or string to the variable x, and then we're outputting that variable. The other main data type that you're going to need for now is boolean. And a boolean is a data type that can have only two values, true or false. So we can have const x equals true, and if we output that we see true, or const x equals false. And if we output this, we see false. So what is this useful for? Well, later down the line, when we're deciding what parts of the code that we want to run, it's going to be useful for us to determine that, and often we're going to say that we're going to run the code if it's true, and not run the code if it's false. But we'll get onto that later. Now let's talk briefly about operators. There are many different operators in JavaScript, and here I'll show you the main ones you should be aware of. If we say const x equals 10, and we also say const y is equal to 5, then we can use some operators here. The first ones we're going to talk about are arithmetic operators. So these are your basic maths operators. So I'm going to say console.log x plus y. This is the first one, and this is addition. So if we run this, we're going to see we get 15. And then I'm going to do x minus y. If we run this, we're going to see we get 5. Then multiplication, we use a star. So x times y is going to be 50. And then for division, we use a slash. So x divided by y is going to be 2. Another one to be aware of is the modulus operation. So we can do this with the percent symbol. And modulus is just the remainder when we do division. So in this example, it's 0. Because when you divide 10 by 5, you have nothing left. Now let's talk about the logical operators. So we can say console.log again. And here we're going to say x with two equal signs, y. So what does this mean? Well, it's asking whether x is equal to y. Two equal signs is checking for equality, and one equal sign is assignment. And we also have three equal signs, which is a strict check, and it's checking for the same data type. In this case, we could have three equal signs or two, and it would give us the same result. In this case, though, it's not equal, so we're going to get false. Then what we can have is not equal to. And if we run this, we have true, because it's not equal to. And then we can do greater than. x is greater than y is true. We can also have greater than or equal to. And this is going to be true as well. Then we can have less than. This is going to be false. 
and then less than or equal to. This is also going to be false. Now let's talk briefly about operator precedence. This is something that you might be aware of in maths already, and it's the same rules that we use for maths when evaluating expressions. So if we remove these variables here, and we simply have um, 5 plus 8 multiplied by 2, then the result of this expression is going to depend on the order of operations or operator precedence. In this case, the correct way to do it is 8 multiplied by 2, which is 16, plus 5, which is 21. So if we run this, we're going to see we get 21. The mistake here would be doing 5 plus 8, which is 13, and then multiplying that by 2, which is going to give us 26. So we can do this instead by simply using brackets. And then if we console.log this, we're going to see 26. So the key thing to remember is brackets change the order of operation or the operator precedence. And multiplication and division have the highest precedence after that. And addition and subtraction have the lower precedence. Now let's write a short story in JavaScript. And we're going to see how variables can help us with this. So I'm just going to say console.log John, who is 20, goes to the shop and buys five apples. And if we log this out, we're going to see we get John, who is 20, goes to the shop and buys five apples. This is fine. But if this story was longer, and if John was repeated multiple times, and suddenly we decide we want to change the character, into Alice instead of John, we might also need to change the age and what she goes to buy and the quantity. And suddenly we'd be scanning through this text and if it's a really long text that will take ages. So in this case what we're going to do is use variables. So what we can say is const because we know this isn't going to change. const name is equal to John. const age is equal to 20, const quantity is going to be equal to 5, and const item is going to be equal to apples. Notice here how I've used this string for the name John because it's text. I've used a number or integer for the age. I've used an integer for the quantity and I've used a string for apples because that's text again. The most important thing here to note is if we wanted to do mathematical operations on the age or the quantity, they need to be integers, otherwise we won't be able to do them because we can't do maths with strings. So now if we insert this into our original string of John who is 20 goes to the shop and buys five apples, we can probably do something with concatenation which means adding strings together. So here what we can say is we can remove John and we're going to have this comma, but before that we can say name plus, so it's going to say John, comma, who is, and then we need to end the string there, do a plus age, and then add in the string there, comma, we need the plus there, goes to the shop and buys, plus quantity, plus a space, plus item, and then plus full stop. So this works, and if we output this, we should get the correct result. And we get what we had before, so it's working fine. But this isn't the best way to do it, because it looks a bit messy. We have name plus, and then this string, plus age, plus, there's a lots of pluses lots of things that aren't necessary to complete the same task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out using two slashes and then underneath this I'm just going to say console.log and then backticks. And we can use backticks here to insert variables into the string. 
Now what we can do is we can use a dollar symbol in curly braces and we can say name, comma, who is, and then we can use the dollar symbol again, curly braces, age, and then we can continue to fill this out. John, who is 20, goes to the shop and buys quantity item, full stop. And now if we log this out, we see the same thing. So this way of presenting a string using string literals is a lot cleaner of a way to do it in this instance. Keep in mind here, something called type coercion has happened. And type coercion refers to the way that JavaScript automatically converts values from one type to another. So for example here, we've got an integer, and we're inserting an integer, or adding an integer, into a string. So in order for that to work properly, it needs to convert the integer into a string. And in a similar way, if we comment this out, and we type console.log, one plus the string of two, we're going to have 12 outputted as a string. That's the same thing happening here. Additionally, if we use booleans that we've seen before, and we say true, which has the number value one, and then we say plus one, this is going to output two as an integer, because we're mixing two types again, and in this instance, the boolean is getting converted to a number with value 1 and is being added to 1. So it's 1 plus 1, which is 2. We could also put false, and this is going to output 1 for the same reason. Finally, let's talk about loops. Loops allow you to repeat a block of code a certain number of times or until a certain condition is met. The three main types of loops are for loops, while loops, and do while loops. First, let's look at a while loop. The way we write a while loop is by saying while, and then in parentheses, the condition that we're going to try and meet, and then we're going to have curly braces. If we remove this code here, but we keep the quantity because we're going to use that later, then we're going to be able to use this while loop. So let's imagine we want to count the quantity of item that we have until we get to the desired quantity. In this case, the quantity is 5. We could say let i equals 1. And then we can say while i is less than quantity, we're going to output i. And then we're going to add 1 to i. So we could do i equals i plus 1. And this works, but there's better ways to do this. Instead, what we can say is i plus equals 1. And this is a better way to do it. It looks a bit neater. But an even better way to do this for this specific case of adding 1 is we can say i plus plus. In a similar way, if we wanted to decrease i by 1, we can say i minus minus. It works in a similar way. So if we run this code, we want to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's see what happens. Well, we start off well. We start with 1, then we go to 2, 3, 4, but we don't get to 5. So why is this? Well, let's go through the program. First, we start at 1. 1 is less than 5. That's true. So using our logical operators from before, we're going to get an output of true, which means this code block here is going to be executed. So we're going to console.log out the output of i, and then we're going to add 1 to i. So we continue to do this. Let's say we get to 4, where i is 4 here. We're going to do 4 is less than quantity, which is 5. That's true. So we do it again console.log out 4, add 1, so we're going to have 5. Now we see 5 is less than 5. Well, that's not quite true. 
So what we need to do here is change it to i is less than or equal to quantity. And now what we have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the while loop. Let's talk now about the do while loop. It's similar to the while loop, but it works slightly differently. So here we're going to say do this block while and then our condition in parentheses. So if we get rid of this, then this is almost exactly the same, but we just change the order that we do things. And we're using the do keyword here. So we're going to do this code and then check the condition. And if the condition's true, then we're going to do the code inside of the do clause again. But if it's false, then we're not going to do it again, and we're going to continue to the next line of our program. So here, the condition is going to be the same as it was before, while i is less than or equal to 5. Then inside the do clause, we're just going to say console.log i, and then i++. plus plus. Now let's see what happens here. We get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this worked exactly the same as the while loop. But in some instances, this won't be the case because sometimes we won't even want to run one iteration of the loop at all. With the do while loop, we always run whatever is in this code block at least once. But with the while loop, we don't have to run it at all. There's a different type of loop that would be better for what we're trying to do than the while loop or the do while loop. And that's called the for loop. So we can write the for loop like this. We don't need the let i anymore. But what we say is for, and then parentheses. And we're going to put three things inside of these parentheses. And then we're going to have curly braces. And this is where we're going to execute the code inside of the loop. So we can say console.log i again. But in this instance, we don't need to do i++ in this block. And we didn't need to say let i up here. Because what we can do is we can say let i equals 0 here. And then a semicolon. And then i is less than or equal to 5, which was our condition, followed by a semicolon. And then i++. plus plus. So what we've got here is the initialization of the variable here. And then we've got the condition check here, and then we've got the iteration, or the next step. So if we run this, we're going to see we got an error. So why is that? So what we forgot to do here is set i to 1, we set it to 0. So that's a simple error that we made, but it's easily fixed. So now if we do this again, we're going to see we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this for loop makes it really easy to write the same thing that we did with the while loop, but in less lines of code. It's a more concise way of doing it. So that's it for the basics of JavaScript. In the next video, we'll be covering working with arrays and objects.